Right. Uh, so I just want to wish everybody a warm welcome uh, that's joining us today with this uh, OpenSense and uh, Zenama uh, live collaborative webinar for 2024. Um, so let's jump into some introductions so you guys know exactly uh, who, you, who the presenters are today. Uh, Ad, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure, Lyle. Uh, well, my name is uh, Ad Schellevis. Uh, I'm the CIO of, uh, of the CISO. Uh, we are the founders of, uh, of the OpenSense project. Well, that's great. Thanks, Ed. And um, for you, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Lyle Simon. And uh, as it says on the label, I'm the, the pro product manager at Zen Armor. Um, yeah, you, I'm sure everybody is pretty familiar with OpenSense and Zenarmor to, to some degree. Um, we, we've had uh, quite a lot of overlap, I would say, for the last seven years since, uh, since Zenarmor has uh, been conceived. So um, in this presentation today, I think you will uh, learn a lot more about how our two companies work together and how we collaborate. So to dive into today's agenda, first of all, um, the duration of this presentation is going to be roughly 35 to 45 minutes. And then we're going to be opening up the, the floor for a Q&A session afterwards. So if you have any questions, uh, uh, feel free to post those into the chat when it becomes available. And uh, we'll try our best to get through as many of those as possible. So just to highlight the agenda for today, uh, first of all, we're going to do a high level intro into OpenSense. Uh, we're going to talk about what OpenSense is, where it comes from. We're going to talk about some of the hardware options and the no vendor uh, lock-in that, that's on offer. And then we're going to talk a little bit about flexibility and extensibility, how OpenSense uh, offers that flexibility and extensibility to vendors such as Zenarmor. And then we are going to dive into an intro about Zenoma, a high-level intro to that. And for the final half of the webinar, we're going to talk a little bit about reporting and monitoring, uh, remote work, VPNs, advanced protection, and central management for both the products and how both these products uh, essentially deal and offer value in their own respective way to, to everybody that's using them. So um, to jump straight in, um, Ed, what, what can you tell us about OpenSense? Uh, I'm going to hand over to you. Well, Lyle, OpenSense is, uh, well, we founded OpenSense uh, back in 2014. Uh, we started the project. Our initial release was in January 2015. And we always have been a very open and transparent open source project. Uh, you can find, uh, well, almost all our code online uh, on GitHub, which is our collaborative uh, platform. Um, what we're doing is pretty uh, traceable in that way. Uh, there are a lot of users uh, involved in either, well, just using the product, discussing, uh, the, the discussing about security uh, firewalls, uh, and, and the things that you can do with around uh, with OpenSense. Um, there's quite a large user base, both in users and in customers, uh, but it's also quite f uh, a large variety of different types of, uh, of, of users. Um, OpenSense can be used in well, almost uh, every environment from people uh, using it to protect their homes. Uh, uh, usually they're a little bit more tech savvy uh, and, and using products like this at their, uh, at, at, for their home situations. Uh, small and medium sized businesses, enterprises, data centers, uh, schools uh, uh, as, as well. well Nowadays, almost everything needs a firewall, and OpenSense is just a very good fit for that. As I already mentioned, um, well, we have quite a, an open um, uh, development uh, method, but we're also releasing quite often. We have a very structured way in, uh, in, in, in building new releases. So every half year, we're uh, releasing a new community version, one in January, because, well, we started one uh, once in January, and then one in uh, July. That's also uh, our, our uh, version uh, scheme. So 
if you look at this year, 24.1 was the release from January, for example. And then intermediate, there are a lot of minor releases, which are both uh, feature enhancements, sometimes uh, security patches, because, well, the security world is, uh, uh, is pretty fast moving in that way. So we offer uh, a lot of uh, new features in, uh, and a lot of fixes and security patches in every release. This high velocity in the community version brings us eventually a version which is more aimed at businesses, and that's our business uh, edition. The OpenSense business edition is the version that incorporates all the best of the community edition, but feature-wise, always a little bit later. So we have time to learn from the community, uh, to be able to work with the community to improve the product, and eventually we're releasing that in the business edition. The business edition also uh, is, is being brought to an external firm for uh, compliance testing every half year. And that's Lynch compliance that we're aiming for uh, in, in every cycle. Um, that's, uh, well, we think it's very good to not all, only look at a product ourselves, and well, the, 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 the whole world that's, that, that's looking at us and, and, uh, and reporting back if they do found issues, but also to, uh, to fill this in in a little bit more structured way to, uh, to ask an external party to look at our software, to, uh, to bring it through a testing uh, bed and tell us where to improve and eventually also deliver a stamp that it's, uh, it's actually certified. <laughs> That's perfect. So, you know, now that we understand how um, the the OpenSense uh, development cycle works and compliance and the user base, um, perhaps you can fill us in a little bit on some of the enterprise features, um, some of the best of the enterprise features that you guys offer. Yeah, sure, Lyle. Well, uh, OpenSense really comes with batteries included. Uh, the, the base product uh, already contains most of what people uh, need, and you can extend it additionally with, uh, with plugins on top of that. Uh, feature to expect uh, in OpenSense well, is everything you need around routing, being able to set policies with firewall rules, uh, different VPN technologies, uh, building different la layer two networks together using VXLANs, uh, different types of DNS services, traffic shaping, uh, intrusion detection and prevention. Yeah, you name it, or it, 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 it's in there either with an additional plugin package or uh, already in the product itself. <laughs> So um, a lot of the questions that we get around these two products um, from both sides, which I'm sure you'll agree uh, with Ed, is that uh, people um, don't necessarily understand all the hardware options or the virtualization options that they have when it comes to uh, running OpenSense and Xenarmor. Uh, would you be able to give us a little bit more details about where OpenSense can, can essentially run and in which environments? And uh, also um, describe to us a little bit about your official hardware that you have on offer. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, <clears throat> uh, OpenSense runs uh, basically on, 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 on everything that's x86. Uh, most uh, servers and, uh, and clients available, uh, you can install it on that as long as it's not too exotic. Uh, that means you need proper driver support for well the operating system that we uh, that we use, uh, and if there are proper drivers, well you can just install OpenSense on it. There is no vendor lock-in in any way because also well you can download the software and just use it. Uh, you don't even have to call us. Then there are virtualization options. Uh, in the enterprise, uh, we do see a lot of VMware being used still. Uh, so VMware ESX is, uh, is supported, no problem. Uh, Cloud-based infrastructures such as Amazon's um, EC2 or Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Azure. 
For both of these options, we also offer it directly from the marketplace, which makes deployment very easily because you can just run it from the marketplace, install it within your cloud infrastructure, and you're ready to go. Then when it comes to the best possible option for open, uh, for OpenSense, well, that's obviously the hardware we develop ourselves. Here in the Netherlands, we, uh, we develop our, our own hardware um, specifically with OpenSense in mind. So it's not general purpose. You, uh, it doesn't contain connections. You don't need to run a firewall because it's only for uh, it, it, it's only for 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 open sense. That means it is very stable. Everything that's uh, that's not needed and it's not on the machine also can't break. So it's it, it, it's properly engineered. Um, and well, I personally also like very much how they look nowadays. Uh, we refresh the whole uh, assortment over the last years. You see some screenshots over there. Um, well, for the whole enterprise, from uh, your branch offices needing connectivity to your data center uh, needing connectivity options uh, at, at higher speeds, well, we do offer different choices uh, ourselves over there nowadays. Yeah, that's perfect. They they do generally look uh, like quite attractive looking appliances. So uh, definitely something to uh, you know that'll look appealing you. uh, when you install it in your rack kind of thing. So yeah, definitely. Um, so anyway, moving on to the next little bit, uh, we're going to be talking about flexibility and uh, extensibility uh, of the Open Sense platform. Um, and Ed, can you? perhaps uh, fill us in on, on how OpenSense offers this flexibility, uh, this enterprise grade feature set, as well as how it makes it a very attractive platform for uh, third party vendors such as uh, Asset Zen Armor and uh, how all that integration works in your environment. Yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> Well, which I already explained a little bit in the in the introduction, that uh, OpenSense comes with a lot of features uh, included in the core product. But maybe even more important is that how we develop, we also try to make it attractive for others to develop on top of OpenSense. We're quite open in how components on OpenSense work. So we really try to, uh, to, 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 to build a platform here where others can cooperate into uh, building their solutions, which can integrate into OpenSense. I, uh, personally, what I find a very nice example of such a community mo uh, module that has been developed over the years is WireGuard. A couple of years ago, uh, WireGuard uh, turned out to be pretty popular on different platforms. Uh, one of our community members was also pretty enthusiastic about this uh, and wanted to build, build his own plugin. He built a plugin for OpenSense to support uh, WireGuard on OpenSense. Uh, which uh, which got more and more popular over time. So at some point in time, we thought, well, we should also invest some time on this plugin ourselves, make it a little bit more fluent, uh, make it a little bit uh, uh, more polished, easier to use for people, uh, and extend it with features such, such as high availability. And eventually, in uh, 24.1, our latest uh, community edition, we also um, chose to integrate WireGuard into our core product. So nowadays, if you install the latest community edition, there are different options for VPNs as well as, uh, as WireGuard, but WireGuard is already in there. But this whole thing started as a community plugin. Um, so Good ideas sometimes come from uh, from people within our community, uh, mature with all the people that we're working with, uh, with all this, uh, these ideas, and eventually, well, they can get more standard, more, uh, well, easier for people to, uh, to use. At some point, uh, you, you guys from Zen Armor also started working on improving the support for uh, uh, the kernel level that uh, the, the kernel module that WireGuard uh, uh, is built on. 
that means that uh, it is possible to add products like Sun Armor on top of OpenSense that can also intervene with the traffic on the WireGuard tunnel uh, when it uses that specific uh, technical component. And all of these things are being developed uh, well out in the open in the community. And I think that's a very nice thing about how our platform works, how cooperation works between different uh, community members and different companies like Zen Armor in this case. So I would gladly give the uh, the floor back to you, Lyle, because I talked a lot now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, you you've been speaking quite a lot, so let me let me give you a bit of a break there. So um, for for those of you that that don't know what Zen Armor is, um, basically Zen Armor is uh, an extension essentially uh, of OpenSense, but not only limited to OpenSense. Once again, as I said earlier, uh, we also have the ability to run on um, any other Linux or Unix-based uh, operating systems, uh, ranging from FreeBSD to Ubuntu. Um, however, we do have an exceptionally close relationship with uh, with OpenSense and a very well integrated um, a product with OpenSense as well. So, just to fill you in on what we offer and how we extend OpenSense, we we bring next generation firewall capabilities to OpenSense, where we have the ability to offer real time advanced security, so we can detect malware and phishing and botnets and all those things that generally we don't want on our network. And this is all made possible through our threat intelligence, which uh, comprises of our in-house threat intelligence that we've created over the last couple of years, as well as commercial-based uh, threat intelligence provided by BrightCloud. I'll go into a little bit more detail about that later on in the presentation. And then uh, we're able to, to use TLS and deep packet inspection to be able to see what's happening on the network and be able to, to categorize and classify any of the traffic that's, uh, that's traversing your network. Uh, to make all this exceptionally visible to you, we have comprehensive live analytics and reporting. Uh, roughly 60 plus reports, uh, live session views giving you a full end-to-end -end visibility of what's happening on your network. Uh, more information about that to come shortly. And then the element that we give in order to control the traffic on your network is through policy-based uh, control, where we can once again uh, control applications and web content. Uh, we have quite a, a large database of already populated and categorized applications, which you can use as well as uh, web controls. So uh, you'll see out the box, um, the, most likely the, the apps that you need blocked are already included within our uh, offering to you. And then most importantly, uh, because this presentation is targeted at businesses, um, we also have the ability to uh, provide you with an API that's included in Zenoma. So you can integrate with your existing Active Directory or popular SIM or SIEM solutions like Splunk, Datadog, Wazoo, um, whichever you choose. And then uh, a, a new feature which has seemed uh, to, to gain quite a lot of popularity in a, in a very short amount of time is the new device identification and control uh, feature that we released with version 1.16. So our idea behind doing this is uh, we wanted to help businesses and users essentially to strengthen their IT uh, asset management strategy. So uh, we we give you the option where Zen Armor is able to detect and control the devices that are um, behind the, the Zen Armor firewall. Uh, we can categorize the devices for you um, and we can either trust them or untrust them and then use policies to control how those particular devices uh, access the network. So you could have a, a group of laptops that need a certain policy. You could provide that, or you could have mobile devices that need a different policy. Uh, once again, you can provide that using uh, Zen Armor. And then for those of you that are interested in time-based control or even parental control for our, our home and uh, uh, home lab users, uh, you can once again uh, utilize that through our policies. So you can set up schedules around when the policies apply. 
And then to wrap this all up, we offer you a very scalable um, management solution for that where we have Zen Console. Uh, you can use Zen Console to manage all your Zen Armor instances. Uh, once again, more info to come on that a little bit later in the presentation. So uh, with that said, uh, we're going to be diving into reporting and monitoring. Um, I'm going to hand over to Adigan, who's going to be discussing OpenSense's unique way of, of health diagnostics and insights and traffic flow uh, on the platform. Uh, Ed, would you care to give us more info there, please? Yeah, thank you. Um, <clears throat> well, within OpenSense, there are a lot of tools available to di uh, to diagnose your uh, your network problems when it uh, when it comes around traffic uh, surrounding your firewall. We think it's very important that you're able to analyze your issues uh, without needing a console. It is possible to uh, to gain console access to your OpenSense, either using SSH or uh, an actual console on the machine. But in most cases, you really want to be able to, uh, to analyze your problems using the web interface, because that's where the thing is uh, designed for. Then looking at the different tools that are available within OpenSense, um, these are quite a variety of, of, of different tools. Um, things like a packet capture to be able to easily trace where packages arrive and where they're going to uh, and what type of information is in these packages. Um, we see that uh, that's extremely useful to be able to, uh, to, to, to analyze problems when traffic is not flowing for whatever reason, uh, to at least have, have a clear idea of what's happening within your network. Uh, firewall logs, you can uh, see which rules are being triggered live when enabled. Uh, different tables that are in OpenSense that are relevant for your networks, such as, well, who are your neighbors? Uh, for IPv4, that's ARP, and for IPv6, that's NDP. Uh, you, want to, uh, you want to be able to find these hardware addresses, uh, know uh, which machines are, uh, are connected to it. Uh, looking at state tables when it comes to firewalling, um, but also tools to be able to, uh, to ping specific hosts on your network to see if, well, from the firewalls perspective, you are able to read specific locations or how traffic is flowing when going to a specific location using tools like Traceroute. That's, most of these tools are really aimed at, I have a problem on my network somewhere and what's happening. Then there's also uh, some tooling available to look at uh, at past events, and that's well. The, the health diagnostics really help you to look at uh, events such as um, uh, if your provider has a high latency overnight, uh, you can monitor the latency on your. Uh, internet connections, and you can use the health diagnostics tool to, to look at the latency over time. So if that is a returning problem, then at least you have something that you can explain to your provider. Then there's Network Insights. Uh, Network Insights is a NetFlow uh, collector. Uh, we can send NetFlow events to other locations as well if you have a, uh, well, uh, a specific tool to analyze your net flows. Uh, you can send traffic to that NetFlow collector, but for smaller setups, uh, people usually want all of this within the network or within the same firewall. And then you can use Network Insights and you can see uh, how much traffic is being passed through the firewall over time, uh, which ports are being used quite often, which IP addresses are communicating, uh, well, things like that. And that's the traffic flow, and the traffic flow is really looking at the traffic as of now. This helps you to uh, to get an idea about uh, how is my bandwidth being used at this moment? Do I have a bandwidth uh, issue? Or 
uh, which are my which machines are my top talkers at the moment because uh, if one machine is very active and you're not expecting it to be very active at least you know where to look at that moment in time I think that's uh, the most important things around uh, high over open sense uh, Lyle about uh, Zen armor can you tell a little bit more about that yeah, for sure. So, um, so as you mentioned with your with your live traffic uh, flow, um, Zenom Zenom has the ability to to monitor the live sessions uh, that are traversing your network, and we can classify these live sessions in in near real real time. So you can build yourself a end to end picture, essentially of which device or user on your network is initiating that that particular traffic flow and where it's going to, and it'll be classified or categorized rather uh, into into which application is using it. So you have um, total network visibility in that regard in in near real time, and then to monitor the the historic data of what's happening in your network, possibly even using it if you trying to do any kind of threat hunting or anything like that is we offer 60 plus detailed uh, reports um, they are highly granular reports you can drill down onto each element uh, each uh, it, it individual element of a report so you could look for a particular device or a particular app category or um, uh, even a, a URL or so on, where, where you can drill exactly down and you can build yourself a, a picture of what's happening on the network. And um, included in these reports, we also can see the top devices, the, the top content or the top uh, blocks that have happened. Um, we can see which of the top applications are being used, uh, app breakdowns uh, and so on. So it's 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 fully comprehensive and analytical. Uh, Zenoma makes it very easy for you to be able to, to use these reports. And then um, as an extension to this, if uh, you have existing um, SIM or SIEM solutions within your business, uh, you can use Syslog to export these reports into that environment as well. So you could use it as part of your, your daily um, operations in cybersecurity, uh, threat hunting, um, any alerts, any of that kind of stuff that you need to do with it. So in essence, we offer total network visibility. Um, some other examples that you can use this in is perhaps your organization is, is suffering from um, people that are using unsanctioned apps on your network or shadow IT, perhaps as it's better known. Uh, with Zenoma, we are able to find those apps for you, uh, find which devices and users are using them, and then essentially put policies in place to block and control uh, those apps or any kind of um, web content that you don't want to allow on your network. So it's a very easy solution to curb potential uh, shadow IT issues within your business uh, or your organization and also uh, to, to control that. So um, with that said, we're gonna move on to the, the next section where we're gonna talk about how these two products can be combined to help with remote work visibility and then also uh, security, which is uh, obviously a big deal nowadays. So um, as far as remote work uh, uh, is concerned, uh, I had already briefly mentioned WireGuard as one of the options. Uh, OpenSense offers additional uh, um, VPN technologies as well that is that is baked into the platform as well as uh, various control and high availability. Uh, Ed, what, what what can you tell us about uh, about the other technology that OpenSense has for remote work? Well, uh, obviously nowadays we support uh, WireGuard, but still very popular is uh, is IPsec, uh, both for side to side connections, as well as for uh, for road warrior connections. Um, well, the latter mainly because. Uh, a lot of clients support IPsec um, natively, so without additional software. My preference for Road Warriors is still OpenVPN, to be honest. I really like open, uh, IPsec for side-to-side -side connections. It's, uh, it's, it's one of the fastest options available on, uh, on OpenSense. Um, it's quite flexible, it has a lot of options, uh, and it integrates very well with, uh, with other vendors as well. But 
um, when it comes to road warriors and being able to uh, to service home uh, to serve remote workers, then OpenVPN is, in my personal exp uh, experience, uh, a little bit easier to use and more flexible. You can easily um, or you can set up a private key infrastructure for OpenVPN, so you can uh, uh, safeguard your communication with certificates. Uh, but on top of that, you can also extend it to choose a password authentication. And uh, as we do have a very um, uh, pluggable authentication system, you can also uh, add a one-time password with your uh, hardware token on your mobile uh, into the mix. So there are quite some different uh, options there to uh, to secure that network even further. Then every type of, uh, of VPN very likely also needs policies uh, to be able to make sure that different clients or different groups of clients can only access specific uh, areas of your network. And that's where network fencing comes into play. You can create different uh, firewalls uh, where you can, uh, can safeguard your communication from uh, well, either side-to-side -side connections or roadware connections heading into your network or going back into uh, the remote location. Then there's also uh, high availability options in uh, in OpenSense. For WireGuard and OpenVPN, we developed um, we specifically developed options to make sure that if you have an active and a standby node, that uh, only one of them is active at the same time, uh, and they can almost seamlessly go over uh, when. Uh, when the connection drops for whatever reason. So that could also be uh, during a maintenance slot if you want to uh, to upgrade one of the firewalls, um, but you don't want to take your whole infrastructure offline. Yeah, that's that's perfect. So um, to to bring Zenarmor into the mix, uh, as as uh, Ed mentioned, uh, Road Warrior type VPNs. Um, once again, Zenarmor is capable of monitoring and controlling the traffic on those particular interfaces uh, on your OpenSense um, firewall. So to put it into a potential uh, use case, maybe you have a remote, a remote workforce and uh, you only want to allow certain apps or content uh, to traverse that particular uh, VPN tunnel, for example. Maybe you have bandwidth constraints and you want to keep it strictly business, for example, uh, you could use uh, app and web controls to achieve this. Uh, that comes standard, obviously, with, with Zen Armor. And also, um, once again, you have that same level of visibility. So regardless of where the user is, if they on-premise or whether they somewhere working at home or in a coffee shop, you can offer them that same level of uh, security that uh, Zen Armor and OpenSense uh, combined can, can provide in, in those um, in that regard. So um, moving on to a little bit more details about uh, additional um, advanced security that we can offer, um, we're going to talk about phishing and the malware protection and um, how OpenSense and Zenorma, both in their unique ways, uh, can, can provide you uh, security. Um, Ad, can you maybe give us a little bit more info about how OpenSense combined with Suricata and some of the ET Open and ET Pro telemetry rules um, can do this? Yeah, uh, I certainly can, Lyle. Well, OpenSense comes with uh, intrusion detection and prevention uh, pre-installed within the, within the system. We use Suricata for that. Uh, Suricata is a rule-based engine. Um, which also means that you need rules in order to detect threats. One of the most popular rule sets is the Proofpoint Emerging Threat Rules, the ET Pro Open Rules. These are freely available from Proofpoint, uh, and well, everybody can download them, and they're highly popular in well different uh, setup scenarios with uh, with Suricata, not only uh, not only on OpenSense. Apart from that. Uh, if you want even uh, well more rules, uh, better focused rules for 
uh, guarding against uh, more active threats. Proofpoint also offers the ET Pro rule set. The ET Pro rule set is only available at a cost. Uh, well, you can uh, you you can purchase that rule set, uh, and um, that extends the possibilities of the ET Open rule set. But specifically for OpenSense, there's also the Proofpoint ET Pro telemetry rule set, and that's a subset of uh, the ET Pro rule set. Um, but is really targeted at uh, at offering all relevant rules to hunt uh, to hunt for the most active threats at the moment. It um, uh, it combines all the best of ET Pro. It's a little bit more slimmed down to keep it more performant as well and to have less false positives uh, when using it. And all of that is available for free when registering for an account. The um, the thing with ET Pro telemetry is that while you're using ET Pro telemetry, you also help Proofpoint improve the product because um, with ET Pro telemetry, you're sharing events back to Proofpoint about the alerts the the alerts that have been found on your network anonymized, but still which alerts and which uh, which attackers that there were. So that really fits the community idea that uh, together we're, we're building a safer world by, by improving these products and Proofpoint is giving back uh, uh, their rule set in order to be able to do that, uh, that better. I think that's a little bit uh, about the uh, IDPS topic on, uh, on OpenSense. Yeah, exactly. So. From a Xenomer perspective, uh, what we do to, to provide that security and categorization and so forth of, of the apps um, that, that we are aware of and in, in our particular product, um, we have uh, two different sets of data, which we will not, not two sets, but two higher level sets of data that we look at. So the first is our in-house uh, threat intelligence, which we've built over the last seven years or so. And that comprises of various bits of intelligence that comes from various sources uh, online, uh, open source sources as well. Um, and any data or recategorizations or anything that the users such as yourself share or choose to share with us, um, that's where that threat intelligence comes from. We have a, roughly a database there of over 300 million um, unique bits of, of data ranging from URLs to IP addresses and so forth. And then to extend that capability further in our business packages, we offer commercial threat intelligence, which is provided by Bright Cloud Threat Intelligence. Um, just some background about Bright Cloud. Uh, they have roughly 4 billion IPv4 and IPv6 addresses, um, over a billion URL categorizations and domains and apps. And uh, it's, it's an extensive database um, of, of information which we, we leverage. And uh, Bright Cloud is quite prominent within the in the cybersecurity scene, there's about 140 uh, various vendors that um, plug into Bright Cloud and use their, their, their data and the products. So, um, yeah, some of those big names would be like Palo Alto and Cisco and so forth. Um, so, yeah, we, we, we've got really good intelligence, threat intelligence that our product relies on to offer you the very best uh, security uh, in, the, in the game. So the final uh, section that we're going to be moving into um, is the central management um, options that you'll have for each of these products. And I suppose it can be argued to a certain degree that this is one of the most important um, aspects of, of what our products can offer is how you can manage them and how easily you can manage them. Um, Ed, can you tell us a little bit about open central management and how that works um, for OpenSense? Please. I certainly can. Um, <clears throat> well, the uh, OPN Central is part of the business edition uh, and is a central management tool that you can just install on one of your nodes, um, which offers the uh, the ability to uh, to manage multiple firewalls from a single cockpit. Uh, it's an on-premise solution. We're not offering anything cloud-based. Um, 
it's part of the business edition as well already told. So there's no additional fee required to use uh, OPM Central. Uh, apparently, a lot of people do not know that we're offering this, but we have been offering this solution for quite some time now. Um, you can easily step into different firewalls uh, directly from the uh, from the, uh, the central node. So you do not have to log in every time again because you can use the trust relationship between uh, the, the, uh, the between the different firewalls, and you can have uh, centralized backups. For example, uh, you can fetch status information from your uh, your different uh, firewalls that you're managing. Uh, and there's the option to uh, to use provisioning. With provisioning, for example, you can uh, you can have a large shared pool of uh, of aliases that you're using across your whole network because you have different uh, well types of services that you uh, that you do want to uh, allow your clients to have access to, which is similar to most of your firewalls in your infrastructure. Well, then you can uh, you can use the provisioning option to send that information to all the attached uh, firewalls directly. Um, yeah, I think that's a little bit about what OPM Central has to offer. It integrates nicely with everything that's already in Open uh, OPM Sense. So if you have a plugin that uh, that can um, that supports uh, HA uh, synchronization, so high availability uh, options that it can send its configuration to somewhere else. If the configuration should be very, um, uh, uh, well, should really be the same on all the different nodes, then you can also use the same feature to send the same configuration to different nodes some, for some types of services. Uh, you just want to have a copy. Uh, th th this sometimes happens with uh, specific DNS type of services that you want to offer and relaying and every, and every template should, should be exactly the same. That's also one of the things you can, uh, can do with this. Perfect. Uh, so moving into the, the Zenarmor uh, offering as far as uh, management is concerned, uh, we offer a product called Zen Console, which is a cloud-based uh, management dashboard. And it's available with all of our um, plans. So regardless if you're on free or, or right up to the business edition, uh, you'll have access to this. And uh, through through Zen Console, you can manage all aspects of your your Zen Armor um, instances. So you can have ranging from one to a thousand uh, Zen Armor instances managed by this dashboard. And uh, this dashboard is multi-tenanted. So we offer support for businesses or um, MSSPs or MSPs or ISPs where you could isolate and control your your firewall or Zen Armor instances uh, in, in projects, as we call them, within Zen Console, but these could easily be translated into sites, or clients, or so on. And then we also offer um, a role-based access control or RBAC for our uh, users and admins. So you can set up which users or which admins are allowed to manage those particular firewalls and what aspects of the firewall that they can manage. So in some cases, we'd have contributors or we'd have full admins or we would just have viewers that can see what's happening with their firewalls. So we give you that, that level of control over your your Zenarmor um, instances at scale. And then another important feature that we offer, because we realize that from time to time, there, there may be an instance where two administrators might be working on the same Zenarmor instance at once. We have real-time sync uh, abilities where, let's say, I change a setting on the firewall. Um, that firewall will basically, uh, that configuration will basically, as soon as it's been applied, offer uh, will basically offer a, um, a real-time sync to the other administrator and from there on um, we'll be able to we'll be able to um, uh, sync the, the the two together essentially so there's no means of overwriting anybody's um, 
uh, configurations that they would have on their firewall, if, if that makes sense. Uh, and then the final bit about this that I'll mention is that if you are familiar with Zen Console, we have a baked in version of, of this in the OpenSense um, GUI. So the reason why that this was created was because we wanted to minimize the learning curve between somebody that chooses to uh, control their the Zen Armor instances in the cloud or on the OpenSense um, uh, on the OpenSense platform. So this is just part of our our very baked in integration that we have with with the OpenSense uh, product. Uh, so you've essentially got choices as to how you would like to to manage um, your product. It's all it's all up to you at the end of the day. But um, it's very easy, straightforward. All the 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 graphs and the analytics is available from this one platform. Uh, and it's it's super easy to use. So uh, that brings us to the end of uh, today's presentation. Uh, we're going to move into a Q and A session. Um, I'm going to enable the the chat. Uh, if anybody has any questions that they would like to, uh, you know, ask, uh, feel free to do that. Um, we'll dedicate the next 10, 15 minutes or so to answering any questions that we are able to do. Okay, so um, Greg asked, is the recording, uh, is this recorded? Uh, yes, Greg, we have this on demand. Uh, so you, after the presentation, you should receive a link and you can then watch this from the beginning. There's no further questions, so we'll hang around for a few minutes. So uh, Roger, um, Roger asked, do I need Suricata if I use Zen Armor? Um, I would say not necessarily, um, but a, a good plan with this, I would say, is you could use Zen Armor on your on your LAN side interface, where you could monitor the 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 um, egress traffic leaving your network to the internet, and then you could apply Suricata on the WAN side of of your of your traffic. Um, Ed, would you agree with that kind of uh, setup, the way that I propose that? Yeah, well, ideally you want uh, Suricata to have on the land side, but you can only do that in uh, in IDS mode because you cannot uh, stack both on the well the technical option that we're using called NetMap. Um, so ideally you want to have it on the land side, and certainly in IPv4 networks. Um, yes, you can combine them. It, it really depends also on uh, the, 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 the threat information in, in both of the rule sets. I, I, I do think there is some overlap there. Uh, so if you actually, uh, if you really need both of them, I don't think so, but you can use both of them if you want. Um, yeah, so it's 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 ideally it's it's flexible. Um, you you could choose uh, what you want to do. I would imagine it's just the the goals that you would would like to achieve, um, as well as also the the man manageability of both those products. So, um, like in Zenorma's case, if you want uh, a more like an autopilot type environment, then you could apply that. Where if with Suricata, perhaps you 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 wanted to have more of like a hands on type approach. Uh, you know, you, you covered uh, whichever way that you would like to do that. So um, the next question is uh, from Michael. Um, hello, Ed and Lyle. Many thanks for the introduction. Um, I'm using both OpenSense and Zen Armor. Uh, okay, question for me. When multi when will multi core support arrive? Announcement Q one, but forms mentioned delay currently. Saying, um, multi core support uh, should be available uh, later this year. I don't have an exact date uh, for that, but um, I would say probably from version one point one eight uh, onward. Uh, from there, uh, we'll we'll be offering offering that for you for those uh, ten gigabit type uh, connections and so on that you guys uh, have. Um, Next question, 
want I want to know if, I, if it's easy to. <clears throat> yeah, I think okay, that's, from... uh, that's one for me. I want to know if it's easy to move from a community version to a business version, and if yes, what is the process? Well, yes, you can easily move from the community version to the business version, but there is one caveat, uh, and that's um, because our main version of the business edition always is a little bit behind the community version, um, you're actually downgrading in the perspective from, uh, from versioning. Um, that means uh, that if, for example, if you're running 23.7 now, uh, you can very easily upgrade to 23.10. That's not a problem. If you're at 24.1, uh, you cannot really upgrade to 23.10 because that's going back in time. It is possible, but it's 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 less practical. So. What we usually say, well, either reinstall it, uh, or uh, worst case, you can use tools like Opian Sense Bootstrap to go back in time and bring you back into 23.7, and then go to 23.10, uh, or just wait until uh, 24.4 is out, because then you can easily upgrade uh, from 24.1 to 24.4. So there's very often a small period of time where upgrading is a little bit uh, well less practical. I hope this answers your question, by the way. Great, thanks, Ed. Um, the next, it's more of a, a comment than a question. I'm a newbie, I need more familiar in practice. Um, the best advice that I can give you here is uh, check out YouTube. There's plenty of content um, on YouTube about how to set up uh, OpenSense and Zenama. Um, it's all free to start with. Uh, so you can get yourself the community edition of, of OpenSense, uh, build it into a virtual environment. Um, Zenama has a free uh, package as well. And we also offer a, a trial so you can try out some of the, the business uh, edition uh, functionality if you so wish to do but I, I think that's probably the best place to start um, to familiarize yourself with the, the, the product. Uh, the next question from Greg, um, how about crowd second Zenomo? Are they both need to, needed? Currently Suricata on WAN, Zenomo on LAN and I'm thinking about setting CrowdSec. So um, as far as CrowdSec is concerned, um, CrowdSec and, and Zenoma are essentially two completely different products. So that, that must be, be uh, made clear from the beginning. Zenoma is optimized to monitor your egress traffic that's coming from your LAN, leaving out towards the internet and secure that. Where CrowdSec is more of a, a product that you will apply on your servers that queries a particular database that sits online and then it looks for any bad IPs and if it finds any of these type of things then it locks or prevents those users from accessing your your uh, your resources so um, it's 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 two different products there's nothing wrong with using crowdsec and Zen armor uh, as well um, security is obviously a, a layered approach but um, they are essentially two of the different uh, two different products in entirely and what they focus on doing um so yeah try try it out the, there's quite a bit of content on youtube about how to set that up as well uh next question um any chance for something like a home premium over 100 devices subscriptions um we have spoken about uh, extending uh, these particular uh, products in the future. Uh, we're not going to make any promises, or I'm not going to make promises at this stage, but it is something that we are aware about, aware of. There are some use cases uh, where people would like more devices uh, to be able to protect. So um, yeah, definitely something that uh, we are looking at considering, considering at some point in the future. Uh, can I integrate the OpenSense with other product central, um, e.g. Fortinet Manager Analyzer, vice versa? Um, Ed, would you like to to uh, answer that one? Yeah, well, I, at least I can try, but I, I really don't know the Forti Manager Analyzer uh, product. But um, 
uh, you can use OpenSense with, uh, with, with, with other products, but usually uh, you need products that are able to talk to APIs. Um, uh, if you look at OpenSense, uh, a lot of the new software that we, uh, we develop offers API support. Uh, we have been migrating a lot of legacy stuff into new components. And if you build new components, they always have, uh, have API support. Uh, I know there's also a project um, uh, around Ansible support. They, they build Ansible playbooks that can integrate nicely with, uh, with OpenSense. So in, uh, well, in really large environments where you have a lot of different things to manage, you often use, well, other tools. Uh, and I can certainly understand that OpenSense, uh, OPN Central is not the, uh, the best fit in that case, but you can still use the APIs that are available uh, inside OpenSense to do that. And OPN Central also adds a, couple of, well, the business edition adds a couple of extra endpoints that might be practical to use in these cases. Um, so yes, you can integrate with quite some different options, um, but not baked, I don't think baked into a lot of other vendors' products at the moment. Perfect. All right, so the next uh, question from Thornston. Um, can I use Xenoma to filter traffic based on TLS SNI inspection along with host name based wildcard name based rules, but without SSL intercepting the TLS stream? If yes, how does the, Z the ZA plugin then integrate within OpenSense for routing? Thanks. Um, the short answer for that one, uh, without going into too much detail, is that we are currently um, looking at integrating, uh, offering a better solution as far as how how this is the, how this can be offered, um, where we are going to be building a solution in in the coming releases um, for for uh, the, the the ability for you to control wildcards or subdomains um, when it comes to to this request that that you are after. Um, so I would uh, just look out for this. It's going to be coming up in the in the in the future uh, releases. Um, next question from Michael. Currently, Zen provides as uh, as well possibly to turn it on and when. Um, I believe this is enabled in sixteen point two. Are there any caveats? Um, I don't necessarily think there are any caveats to doing that. But the the question is like you got to look at it. Is it necessary to do that? As I mentioned earlier, uh, Zen Armor is optimized for egress traffic to be sitting on your on your WAN side and to monitor all the, the traffic leaving your network and, and securing that against any kind of threats. Um, there's no th there's nothing stopping you from applying it onto your WAN, but I, I think it, it would be redundant to do that. Um, the only thing that I can think of which could uh, create problems for you is if you don't apply your tags properly when enabling your um, interfaces, you'll start to see that there will be a lot of devices on your WAN side that um, that Zenama will start to pick up. So you need to make sure that when you when you set this up properly, that you apply the correct LAN tag to the interface, um, and so it can classify the devices on the LAN side and, and not on the WAN side. So that's the only. Uh, Thing that comes to mind as far as that's concerned. Uh, another one from Greg for both Zenom and OpenSense. Any chance of changing the user manual so I can download as EPUB? Um, just a suggestion. Yeah, it's a good suggestion, uh, Greg. Um, I will relay that message on to our, uh, uh, to our marketing guys and see if they can definitely do a, a conversion into EPUB for you. Yeah, we uh, on the open sense. Uh, we get that question from time to time, but we're also offering the uh, uh, a free ebook uh, with the business edition that you can download. The doc section, maybe we are building it into EPUB at some point, but it's uh, it's work every release and checking uh, checking things out. So that's why we're currently not doing that. Okay, and then the the final question in the in the stack: How does Zen implement? How does Zen implementation with 
open work. In the documentation, it's written that Zen gets the packet first and then open sense. Thus, if Zen blocks it, open should not receive it. Is this correct? Uh, no. Ed, do you want to do you want to answer that first a little bit of the of the question? Yeah, uh, um, Zen Armor utilizes NetMap, and um, that originally is a technology that's um, uh, implemented in the driver before it hits the host stack. So that means if Zen Armor uh, gets the packet and does not send it to the host stack, we uh, we do not see the packet indeed. Uh, this is the same for Suricata and IPS mode. And that's also a very good reason why if you do have vague issues that you cannot that you do not understand, that sometimes it's practical to turn it off uh, for a brief moment and see if the problem still exists. Because uh, as you cannot see the traffic, tools like the packet capture also won't work anymore. So that, that there is a downside in using NetMap. It is... Uh, it's very fast. Uh, that's definitely an, uh, an advantage. And in terms of Zen Armor, you can uh, well you can see the packet in in their tooling. Um, but if it's not being forwarded to the host stack, uh, we don't see it. Perfect. Uh, another two have come in. We'll quickly try to get through those since we're running a little bit out of time. <laughs> Um, Ed, I think this one is uh, is for you. Um, I don't know. It, it sounds slightly more technical. This one, um, perhaps it's for the the technical support channels. But how do you feel about that? Yeah, I would use the forum for that. Uh, we use OpenVPN ourselves as well. Um, sometimes specific setups or specific types of setups in OpenVPN uh, will require changes over over time. Um, it's impossible to answer what the problem is here. Uh, if if you do want to report, uh, well, uh, if you want to discuss it, our forum is a, is a very good place for this. Always check your logs, uh, set the uh, the detail level to debug and check what the log set uh, says, what, because usually it does report uh, relevant information. If you think it is a work, if you do think it is something that, uh, uh, well, it, it did work on 24.1.2 and it doesn't work on 24.1.4, uh, you can also open a ticket on GitHub, uh, but just make sure to use our templates and add enough relevant information into the ticket. Because if people want to, uh, if people want to spend time on it, it helps to, uh, to know what this is actually about. Perfect. Uh, I think this is a follow up yeah, one to it's that. It's follow up on the same thing. Yeah, yeah. That's true. All right. So um, we, we've come to the end of our uh, questions for today. Um, I don't know if anybody's got any last minute questions that they would like us to to ask. Um, I'll leave it. Leave the chat open for another minute or so. Um, but uh, if we're done with all that, um, we just want to wish everybody uh, thank you for for uh, joining us today at uh, in this webinar. And uh, there's a little bit of contact information there on the screen. Uh, if you'd like to uh, research our products um, or contact us, uh, feel free to to, to drop us a, a mail. Um, and yeah, we've, there's plenty of content online about these two products. So um, feel free to, to explore those and test those. Um, just also so that it's that it's clear for everybody, uh, we 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 obviously operate well within the the home uh, uh, and the home lab space, but also don't forget that OpenSense and Zenar Zenom are both enterprise grade products as well, and um, we we've got quite a lot of uh, um, experience in the enterprise and business uh, world as well. So consider us in the future uh, when uh, when you're considering upgrading firewalls or looking for uh, any uh, next generation firewall capabilities. Uh, <laughs> final question for Ed. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, we uh, we have been in contact with him uh, at some point, uh, but we never heard back. So that's uh, that that's basically it. So from our end. Uh, at the moment, we're not planning to integrate TailScale uh, in OpenSense. There are some technical challenges there. Um, um, yeah, 
So, uh, no, not at this moment. But maybe if they ever come back or some, uh, somebody from there and is listening at the moment, uh, feel free to contact again. Perfect. And then there was a final comment from uh, Greg. Uh, uh, I assume he's, you, you, mean, you mean that you're pricing both OpenSense and Zenarma at the moment. Um, if you need any further clarity on that, just drop our either of our sales uh, mail uh, a mail, and uh, yeah, we'll gladly assist you and help you to scale and um, and go from there. And I'm, I'm sure the same applies on on ad side as well. Um, they'll gladly be able to sure. switch you out for your business. So yeah. Right. Um, so yeah. Uh, once again, I, I think we're going to close off for today. Uh, thanks uh, for everybody that's remained uh, for watching. And um, uh, yeah, if you've enjoyed this, uh, please feel free to share this. Um, this uh, presentation will be on demand uh, afterwards as well. Please feel free to share this on your social media if you think somebody else uh, perhaps will get some kind of value out of it. And uh, yeah, I wish everybody all the best. And uh, if you're celebrating the, the long weekend and Easter, whichever part of the world you are, uh, all the best for that. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys soon again. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thanks, Ed, for joining. See you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.